The more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. How to know your spiritual name. It is important that as a believer and as a spiritual person, you know your spiritual name. That's because there are things in your life that will never happen or take place until you know your spiritual name. There are things you yourself, you will never be able to do until you know your spiritual name. And that's because your spiritual name is connected to four things. And if I was in the school of ministry, I would say your spiritual name speaks of four things. Number one, your spiritual name represents your assignment. I'll explain a little bit later. Number two, your spiritual name is connected to your authority. Number three is connected to your access. Number four, your spiritual name speaks of your identity. Your identity in the spirit. Because the person we interact with every day is not the person you are in the spirit. From the moment you got saved, you received a new identity. John 1 verse 12 and 13 declares, He came to his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Verse 13, Children no longer born of men's will or their parents' will, but children born of God. And the word born of God there, it simply means born from above, born of the spirit. Because John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. And if God is a spirit and I'm born of God, it means I am a spirit. So the day you got saved, you received a new identity. I'm called Mzwake because that was from my parents' will. But when I got born again, I received a new identity. Hence, I know my spiritual name. And I pray that after this, you will know your spiritual name. Let me go further. When Jesus was to be born, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, the father, the time he was frustrated. And the angel said, this baby, you shall name him Jesus. Just as Isaiah said, but you and I, we know what Isaiah said. Isaiah never mentioned the word Jesus, but Isaiah said he shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So we have two names here. We have Emmanuel from prophet Isaiah. We have Jesus from the angel of the Lord. Which one is which? Both of them are actually his names. Now, Isaiah spoke of Emmanuel, connecting it to his identity. No wonder why Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father, God with us. In John 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and said, no man can do what you're doing unless God is with him. Meaning Nicodemus was confirming what Isaiah said, God with us. But on the other side, we have Jesus. Emmanuel is connected to his identity, but Jesus is connected to his assignment because the word Jesus means the Messiah. It comes from the word the Savior. But if you go to heaven and you say, I'm looking for Jesus, everyone will be confused. That's because in heaven, his name is not Jesus. In heaven, according to Revelation 19.13, his name is the word of God. No wonder why John said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So we have Jesus here on earth who is called Jesus. But before he was born, he was called Emmanuel. But in heaven, he is called the word of God. God. Same person, but different names. Why? Because names are symbolic to authority, assignment, access, and identity. Let me go further. When you read the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 16, and you read from verse 13, Jesus is, is, is with his disciples in a place called Caesarea Philippi. And then he turns and he asks them a question. And he said, who do men say I, the son of man, am? 
And they began to tell him what people were saying about him. Some they say you are Elijah. Some they say you are one of the prophets. Some they say you are Jeremiah. And then he turned again because that was a public opinion. And indeed, that's what people were saying about him. And then he said to them, I need a private opinion. Who do you say I, the son of man, am? He was not looking for Jesus. Because if he was looking for Jesus, there was no need for him to ask that question because everyone knew he was Jesus. It means he was looking for something beyond. No wonder why when Simon stood up, he said, Thou art Christ. Wait a minute. We are now seeing another name. From Matthew chapter 1 to Matthew chapter 15, we don't see the word Christ or the name Christ. But we are now seeing it and hearing about it for the first time. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus is perturbed. He says to Simon, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my father in heaven. Meaning this revelation was not yet revealed to men. And that's because the name Christ was supposed to come after the cross. That's why scripture declares, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, me and you, we are not in Jesus, but me and you, we are in Christ. That was supposed to be given to Jesus after resurrection because we are the work of his resurrection. So Christ was on the other side of the cross. No wonder why Jesus was shocked when Peter revealed it unto him and said, you are the son of the living God, Christ. And Jesus turned immediately and he says, Simon Bajona, from today, you are no longer called Simon. You are now called Peter. Upon the rock, I will build my church. Building my church is not a problem. But I can't build my church while it's your name is Simon. Why? Because Peter is now connected to the next assignment of his life. And not only that, behold, I've given you authority. Behold, I've given you keys. Whatever you bind on earth shall also be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall also be loosed in heaven. So when the name Peter came, came with his assignment, came with his authority. If it was not important for one to know their spiritual name, there was no need for Jesus to even ask him when he was told to be shocked and also change the name of a man called Simon to the name Peter. When you read your Bible, you realize that a man called Saul did not start with his assignment until he was called Paul. When he got saved, he received an identity. And when he received a new identity, he received a name. And his name was called Paul. Not Saul, but Paul. His mother and father called him Paul. Saul, sorry. But he's now called Paul. Why? Because he has a new identity. He has got new access. He has got new assignment. The sons of Sceva came and rebuked demons from a demon possessed man and they said come out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches scripture declares that the demon possessed man answered and said Jesus we know you see that now Paul we know but who are you there were sons of Sceva and Sceva was a priest but the demon possessed man said who are you I need to know your identity why because your name is connected to your authority let me go deeper into this. You read the Bible in the book of Genesis. You see a man called Abram. And as soon as God enters into a covenant with him, he changes his name from Abram to Abraham. Why? Because Abram means exalted father. But Abraham means the father of nations. So the promises of God upon his life will never materialize until he receives his spiritual name. A man called Jacob. He was Jacob, and the angel, when he said, I will not leave you until you bless me, the angel said, from today you are no longer Jacob, but you are Israel. And Genesis chapter 49 says, and Jacob called his 12 sons, and Israel blessed them. You didn't hear what I just said. Jacob called them, and Israel blessed them. As if these are two different people. No, it was one person. There is a reason why the Bible said Jacob called his 12 sons and Israel blessed them. Meaning you need to pay attention to the context of the text, not just the pretext of the text. There are things in your life you will never be able to do until you know your spiritual name, 
I know they didn't teach you this. I know they don't talk about this. Not that it's not biblical and fundamental or scriptural. It is. It's just that my people are dying because they lack knowledge. The biggest enemy we are facing today in the church is not the devil as we think he is, but is ignorance. Hence, the highest level of deliverance is when your ignorance is confronted. I love the scripture declares. It says, uh, by knowledge, the righteous shall be delivered. By knowledge, the just shall be delivered. So, God will then reveal unto you your spiritual names in different ways. And some of you, God has revealed your names, but because you do not really feel like it's something that you need to pay attention to, you are still called whatever you are called. And as a result, you are not able to function the way you are supposed to function. Let me go a little bit deeper. You realize that when now Jacob, that we are speaking about, called his sons, scripture says, an Israel blessed them. An Israel blessed them. So names are very, very important. Hence, some of you, you'll be sleeping. And you see in your dream somebody calling you with a different name. You know yourself to be Mzwake, but somebody is calling you with a different name in a dream. And it does not happen once. It doesn't only happen twice. You have a name in the spirit that people call you with. And you are, every day when you wake up, you are binding the name. So I think it's very important for you as a believer to know your spiritual name. In part two of this, I'll be talking about how to unlock your name.